I'm still shell shocked over the lack of this red wave. Given Biden's low ratings, given record high inflation, highest in the last 40 years, and given the president's, let's put it, cognitive decline, I would have thought there would have been this massive, massive wave. Now, speaking of cognitive decline. Secret Service team, the Eagle has landed. The perimeter has been cleared of any stairs or bicycles, so all the Eagle has to do is step out of the helicopter. Stand by. The Eagle has made contact. Great work, team. All units, mission is complete and the Eagle is secure. We don't anticipate any issues with the Eagle crossing the tarmac. It's a perfectly flat surface and there's a 0% possibility that he'll mess this up. Okay, what's going on with the jacket right now? Secret Service team, the Eagle can't find the armhole in his jacket. Jesus Christ. The First Lady has stepped in to help the Eagle put his jacket on, but it looks like she's just making things even worse somehow. Agent Murphy, try telling the Eagle there's an ice cream cone waiting for him at the end of that jacket sleeve. That might speed things up a little bit. Oh, it worked. All units, the Eagle finally has his jacket on and is making his way across the tarmac. And there go his sunglasses. Unreal. Now, <laughs> back to the midterms. I really underestimated the degree to which this business about election denier would resonate with Democrats and apparently with independents. A bunch of people that allegedly were election deniers were boosted by money from the Democrats in order to get them nominated because they thought they'd be easier to beat. For example, there is a candidate named Bailey who ran for governor against the Democratic J.B. Pritzker. Watch this. An agenda too conservative for Illinois. It's part of a national strategy. Official Democratic campaign arms and outside groups are pumping millions of dollars into Republican contests in at least seven states, betting that Trump faithful election denying candidates will be less competitive in November. Then there's Dan Cox, who ran against the Democrat governor of Maryland. Donald Trump's handpicked candidate for Maryland governor. Cox worked with Trump, trying to prove the last election was a fraud. In Maryland, Democrats spent $627,000 to elevate Dan Cox, who won the primary over a moderate backed by Republican Governor Larry Hogan. Republican candidate John Gibbs versus the Democrat in Michigan's 3rd District. Handpicked by Trump to run for Congress, Gibbs called Trump the greatest president. In a Michigan swing district, Democrats poured $435,000 into promoting John Gibbs, who has spread election lies and conspiracies. Then there's Don Bulldog, who ran against the incumbent for Senate in New Hampshire. In a crowded field, the candidate closest to Trump, Don Bulldog, leads the polls. New Hampshire's Republican candidate, Bob Burns. Meet Bob Burns. In TV ads like this one, an unexpected and risky strategy. And I'm an America first candidate. Burns follows the Trump playbook on immigration, the border and guns. What at first glance looks like a typical campaign message for a Republican primary candidate is actually an ad paid for by Democrats. Democrat service responsible for the content of this ad. Bob Burns, a former county treasurer and loyal supporter of former President Donald Trump, is hoping to take on Democratic Congresswoman Ann Kuster to represent New Hampshire's 2nd District. And again, these are Democrats putting dollars into so-called election deniers that they are suggesting are the equivalent of Holocaust deniers, yet they're putting money up on them to prop them up so they can run against a Democrat because they clearly believe that the Republican is easier to beat. Some might call that a little cynical. Then you've got the Democrat versus the Republican candidate for Pennsylvania governor. The Republicans called Doug Mastriano. Watch this. The Democratic nominee for governor, Josh Shapiro, spent an estimated $855,000 on ads defining his likely opponent, Doug Mastriano, as an extremist during the GOP primary. And he led the fight to audit the 2020 election. If Mastriano wins, it's a win for what Donald Trump stands for. Now, Mastriano, an election denier who was outside the Capitol on January 6th, is racing to catch Shapiro in the polls. Can we just put a penalty flag on this election denier business? Again, if the Democrats are so concerned about election deniers undermining the foundation of our republic, why in the world would you put money nominating election deniers? Let me just say something about this term, election denier. The Hunter Biden laptop story was quashed. Even the CEO of Twitter at the time, Jack Dorsey, says they shouldn't have done it. So if you believe that that altered the outcome of the election, and when asked if you believe the election was fair, you're thinking about the Hunter Biden laptop story, does that make you a, a election denier? 
And if you agree with the Wisconsin Supreme Court justice who filed a dissent in the lawsuit that Trump filed in, in Wisconsin, a ruling that was four to three, and the chief justice of the Wisconsin Supreme Court, again, filed a dissent claiming that the drop boxes should not have been put there. And going forward, by the way, drop boxes are not going to be used unless they're in election precincts uh, in Wisconsin. Does that make you a, a election denier? And if you agree with the dissent that was filed by the member of the Michigan Court of Appeals, who said that Secretary of State should not have used COVID as an excuse to send in mail-in ballots to every man, woman who's registered to vote, whether they requested one or not? Does that make you a, a election denier? And if you agree with Alan Dershowitz and Jonathan Turley, two left-wing professors who believe that the rules and regulations were stretched and bent in Pennsylvania to the point where Dershowitz believed that Donald Trump's lawsuit would be taken up by the Supreme Court, and there's no obligation that they have to do that, and that when the Supreme Court took up the case, says Dershowitz, predicted Dershowitz, Trump would win. He was wrong. But if you side with those two professors, are you, are you, are you election deniers? And then there's all that money that Mark Zuckerberg spent that turned out to help the Democrat vote. Well, inflation continues to be a plague on our economy, our families, and our savings. And the irresponsible spending from the left just continues to exacerbate the problem. Larry Elder here. This year, we witnessed almost every kind of negative economic record from empty grocery store shelves to 40-year high inflation. Do not let your savings wither away. Hedge against inflation with gold from Birch Gold. Visit LarryForGold.com for your free info kit on diversifying into gold. Plus, when you do it this month by Black Friday, get a free gold bar with every purchase that you make by December 22nd. With almost 20 years experience converting IRAs and 401ks into precious metal IRAs, Birch Gold can help you. Do not allow the left to devalue your savings. Visit LarryForGold.com and claim your free info kit from Birch Gold. Again, you can own physical gold and silver in a tax-sheltered retirement account, and Birch Gold will help you do it. Once again, visit LarryForGold.com to claim your free info kit on gold and ensure your eligibility for a free gold bar with every single purchase. Secure your future with gold. Do it today. I give you an article from NPR, headline, How Private Money from Facebook CEO Save the 2020 Election. Starts out by talking about an election official named Bill Turner, who is the acting director of voter services in Chester County, right outside Philadelphia. And it says he was expecting a huge turnout. And oh my goodness, thank you so much for the Zuckerberg money, because without the Zuckerberg money, the count would have taken a lot longer. And it says that he is one of 25 election directors from swing states interviewed who said the grant money was essential in preventing an election meltdown. Now, a little known charity called the Center for Tech and Civic Life that got a boatload of money from Zuckerberg, gave grants to more than 2,500 jurisdictions. And in Philadelphia, each office received money to spend any way they wanted to. And Turner, the aforementioned Turner, used the grant to buy 14 drop boxes for ballots, pay staff to watch those sites, and purchase body cameras. Now, the whole article talks about the fact that these election officials were under under the gun, undermanned, understaffed because of the infusion of all these mail-in ballots because of COVID. And had it not been for the Center for Tech and Civic Life, who knows what would have happened? Here's what NPR admits to, quote, the full extent of the grants isn't known. Now get this. The Center for Tech and Civic Life declined repeated interviews and requests to discuss the funding and how it was used. Why would they not talk about the funding and how it was used? Now, it says, in weeks since the election, allies of Trump have included the Center for Tech and Civic Life grants in their voter fraud conspiracy theories. Now, an associate professor of political science at Suffolk University in Boston is quoted, it's really important that it's a one-time thing. 
But over time, in and of itself, the use of private money for election administration, she says, is in and of itself corrosive. It sullies the election in a way we don't need it sullied at all. So here you have this professor admitting that this should only be a one-time thing. Now, that's NPR. You know NPR is left-wing, even though you and I are helping to pay for it. Let's turn to an article about the same subject in the New York Post. Headline, Facts About Zuck Bucks, How He Helped Swing the Electorate in 2020. And there is a book called Rigged by Molly Hemingway. There's a movie called Rigged by Citizens United. And here's what they say. The money, $350 million to this charity. One of the founders of this charity is a former Obama Foundation fellow who used to work on the Voting Rights Project for Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, a politically liberal advocacy group funded by foundations such as George Soros Open Society. Does that smell a little suspicious to you? And according to the Foundation for Government Accountability, Georgia received more than $31 million in Zuckbucks for the general election alone, one of the highest amounts in the country. It worked out to nearly 9% of all Zuckerberg funding, even though Georgia has just 3% of the country's population. The money was not spent on COVID-related issues. For instance, the three counties that received the most Zuck bucks spent only 1.3% of that funding on personal protective equipment. The rest was spent on salaries, laptops, vehicle rentals, attorney's fees for public record requests, mail-in balloting, and other measures that allowed election officials to hire activists to work the election. And get this, not all 159 counties in Georgia received the funding. Of those that did, Trump voting counties received an average of $1.91 per registered voter, while Biden voting counties received on average $7.13 per voter. Trump won Georgia by more than five points in 2016, but he lost it by three-tenths of a percentage of a point in 2020. On average, says the, Washington, the New York Post, as a share of the two-party vote, most counties moved Democratic by less than one percentage point in that time. Counties that didn't receive Zuck Bucks showed hardly any movement at all. But counties that were funded by Zuck Bucks moved on average 2.3 percentage points more Democratic. Hmm. Democratic counties in Pennsylvania were also targeted. The Capital Research Center determined that Biden won eight of the 10 highest funded CTCL counties, that's the initial for that, for that charity, in the state. A Biden winning county was over 3.5 times more likely to be funded by CTCL than a Trump winning county. Trump counties receive an average of 59 cents per capita, while Biden counties receive an average of $2.85 per capita. Philadelphia, the most richly funded Biden county, received $6.32 per capita, compared to a mere $1.12 for Burks, the most richly funded Trump county. So the New York Post and the book Rigged are suggesting that this money was used to get out the Democratic turnout while the article from NPR just says Zuckerberg was just being a good guy. Do you think maybe if you're concerned about the $419.5 million that Zuckerberg spent on getting the Democratic turnout, you are a, a, a election denier? And then there's the Gableman report you probably haven't heard of. This is a former chief justice of the Wisconsin hired by the Republicans to look into shenanigans in Wisconsin. And it turns out a whole bunch of people who are pretty incoherent in nursing homes ended up voting for Biden. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Now, as mentioned, a man named Michael Gableman, he used to be the chief justice of the Wisconsin Supreme Court, was hired by the Republicans to do a report over allegations of shenanigans in Wisconsin in 2020. And he had somebody interview people at nursing homes, and it turns out a whole bunch of people who apparently appear to be incoherent cast ballots for Joe Biden. How did that happen? Watch this. Right, and so with respect to um, 
the voting, were you surprised that your father voted in 2020? I was. I uh, actually, after uh, I looked on the I Vote Wisconsin thing, I looked and I, I'm like, oh, this can't be true. He requested a absentee ballot and then he filled it out himself. And so yeah. these, the whole purpose of these illustrations are to illustrate the real world and real person consequences of the decisions that are made in this case, by five out of the six commissioners on the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Imagine that two candidates are running for governor of Wisconsin and that today is election day in Wisconsin. What will the people of Wisconsin do today to pick the next governor? I mean, no, I don't like our governor. Okay. She's... Uh... She's not capable of making many decisions at all. She's uh, basically not capable any longer of even remaining awake for more than a few minutes. Wow, and so, um, and so were you surprised that she voted in February 2021? <laughs> Absolutely. I guess in my mind, I thought if you put your parent into a facility because they were incapacitated, they would not even be offered uh, the vote. Now, if you're concerned about what you just now saw, you are an election denier. Doesn't matter why you have some concerns about 2020. All you have to do is raise concerns and you are dismissed as an election denier. Now, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and remember to go to LarryWithEpic.com to subscribe to the show. Because the first half hour of the show, you get it gratis. You get it for free because that's how we roll. Second half, you have to be a subscriber. And remember to click on the description below to get on our mailing list because, believe it or not, we have been demonetized, or as Obama might say, demonetized by YouTube. And because we've been demonetized, we'd love for you to donate to the program so you can always hit that donate button, all right?